managerial accounting, the budgeting process, one of the budgets that's the most important to prepare is the cash budget. The cash budget basically looks at when is the cash going to flow into your business and when is the cash going to flow out. So many businesses will do the cash budget almost on a daily basis. We're going to be doing the cash budget for exercise 13, which asks us to do the cash budget for the month of June. So whether I do the cash budget by the month, by the week, or by the day, it basically sets up this way. We look at our cash receipts. In other words, when the cash is flowing in, we subtract from that our cash disbursements, the cash going out for whatever reason and we're going to find what we call the change in cash. And that change in cash then is added to your beginning cash balance. And then you have to figure out, do you need to borrow? Can you repay some money? To come up with what we call is our ending cash balance. Now in this particular problem, if I read exercise 13, it says that our ending cash balance has to be equal to or, or, or greater than $4,000. So in other words, they always keep $4,000 cash in the bank at all times. So where we're headed is to have this at least $4,000. Well, where did our cash begin? According to exercise 13, our beginning cash balance was exactly $4,000. So now let's take a look at all the various aspects of the problem and put them in the right place. So in part A, it says the cash balance at the beginning was $4,000. Did we put that where the beginning cash goes? Yep. Part B says so sales for May and June were $50,000 and $40,000 respectively. Collections on sales are 40% in the uh, month of sale and 50% in the month after sale and 10% is never collected. In other words, you sell to deadbeats. So if that's the case and we're doing the cash budget for the month of June, for the month of June, we're going to collect 40% of June sales. Well, June sales are 40,000, so 40% 40 of 40,000 means we're going to collect cash of 16,000 from June sales in June. As far as what we're collecting in June from May, the previous month, we're going to collect 50% of the previous month, which just happens to be May. May sales were 50,000. So in the month of June, we are going to collect 25,000 of May's sales. In other words, that's how much cash is going to flow in. So in total, in the month of June, I'm collecting a bit of May and a bit of June for a total cash inflow of $41,000. Okay? That's all of B. C says general expenses budgeted for June are 20,000. But depreciation, which is a non-cash expense, represents a thousand of this. So as far as our cash disbursements, we're going to have a disbursement for general expenses. And those were 20,000, but a thousand of those is depreciation. So we'll subtract a thousand out. That means our cash outflows are only going to be 19,000, not 20,000. It then says in part uh, D that we have some inventory purchases. So when I look at my purchases for May, it says that I'll pay for half of my purchases in the month of purchase and half of them in the month following purchase. So in May, I purchased $40,000 well, I only paid for 50% of that, which is, what, 20000 So I paid for half of my May's purchases in June. And then for June, $30,000 were my purchases. How much am I going to pay? Half of it. 
or 50 percent, which means I'm going to pay 15,000. So that's what it says in Part D. Part E talks about what other expenses I have. And the other expenses I have is I'm going to pay for some office furniture. And I'm going to pay $5,000 for office furniture. And I'm going to pay for some sales commissions. And I'm going to pay $6,000 for sales commissions. So if I take my cash receipts, subtract all these cash disbursements, I find that I have $24,000 is my change in cash. In other words, there's more cash going out than coming in. Well, if that's the case, and my beginning cash is $4,000, and I want at least a $4,000 ending balance, do I have to go out and borrow? I sure do. So I need to go out and borrow $24,000. So what the cash budget is going to allow you to do is see how your cash comes in, how your cash goes out, and when you have to go to the bank to borrow or repay funds.